Hey, what's going on folks? It's Mike here, and today we're going to continue our lessons in graphical user interface programming with the WX widgets library. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive in and do our hello world example. So what I've got here is the WX widgets web page on the right side of the screen here. And I'm going to go ahead and open up two windows here, the online manual, which I'll open in a tab, and the hello world and WX widgets. And this is what I want to talk through as previously, if you've watched some of the lessons in this playlist, you've seen how to just get this up and running. But I actually want to talk about how WX is working a little bit just to give you a little bit more intuition. And again, reading through this tutorial here should give you some insight as to what WX is doing. So let's go ahead and copy the code once again, and then we'll build this from the ground up, looking at each of the lines of code so that we can understand what exactly is going on and trying to build your foundations with WX widgets. So I'm going to go ahead and just in my downloads folder where I've built it, whether you built this for Windows, Linux, or Mac, just go ahead and create a hello program. And I'm going to name this hello.cpp. And let's just go ahead and paste in all the code here. And I'm going to first just compile this to make sure this works and just give you a review of what we did last time. So within this directory, I do have my WX config tool. And this is for version 3.15. Now, be a little bit careful here. If you have installed through some app manager and on your path, it might be linking to another version of WX 3.05. It's not really going to make a difference here, but just in case you have multiple versions installed either through package managers or the one that we have here on source, we want to be a little bit careful here. So if you want to remedy this, you'll have to add WX config to your path variable. But enough on that. Just know that I'm going to reference WX config here. And I'll want to use things like CXX flags to get the include path and libs so that I also get the libraries here to build this example. OK, so with that as just a refresh here, I'm going to go ahead and use my compiler here and do C17, the hello program we wrote, and I'll output it as prog. And then with the little uh, tick marks, we'll include our appropriate libraries here. So if we give that a moment here, we should have our program available and ready to run. And let's go ahead and see where that is. And it's just behind my window here. And we've got our program here. So again, it's got the hello world sort of dialog, help and about, uh, which pops up another dialog. And finally, we can quit the uh, application here. So it's important to play around with some of the examples here, just so you know what functionality there is. And that'll give you a little bit more context with the code. So I'm going to go ahead and quit this here. So let's go ahead and open up the source code and take a look at what exactly is going on in the Hello World program. I'll make this a little bit bigger just so you can read it uh, on the screen as you follow along. So the first thing that we have here is our includes, which of course we know we need to include the WX libraries. And WX is actually packed with many different libraries. So again, in the second tab, I'm just looking at the different documentation here. And you could go ahead and check out some of the classes here uh, that we have available. And I'm just going to go ahead and pick on any of these, uh, which happens to be the WX any class, um, which is a container for any type. These are auxiliary things. Again, WX is not just a graphical user interface library, but it's got other utilities and data types um, all to its own. But you'll notice that it has include and the path for, well, whatever this class is that you want to do something with here for using any. And it's important to note that when I include wx.h uh, here, it's just going to include the most common files that are available. So if you do happen to follow some other tutorial or find one of the samples here, just note that this is how you're going to figure out if you have a sort of undefined symbol for whatever this happens to be, the type or the widget that you're using. This is how you'll figure out what the include path is. So as always in our C++ programs, we start off with the includes here. Now, this next part I want to look through here is just setting up uh, our own class here, which inherits from WX app. So let's go ahead and again, just search through here in our search for WX app. And let's go ahead and see the uh, description here. And I'll make this just a little bit bigger. And if you read through the Hello World tutorial, you're basically going to find that pretty much every application that you make, every graphical user interface application that is, is going to have some class that inherits uh, from WX app and then overrides the on init function. 
This member function again is going to be what is called well when the my app is initiated. In fact, let's go ahead and see if we can just get an idea of um, what is going on here on init. So let's go ahead and see if we can find the actual uh, member function here and sort of uh, trace our path here. Now it looks like this is overriding from some other type here. WX app council. Well, where does this come from? Let's see if it's in our inheritance uh, hierarchy. Well, WX app has uh, or inherits. So this class from yet another class WX console. So you can again try to follow this tool chain here. So again, that's just how to sort of see which types inherit from the others and get used to reading some of this documentation here. Again, so even if I immediately don't find it within this class here, uh, it's important to know how to navigate this documentation. Um, so again, here are just some notes about uh, what is going on uh, with this particular app here. Okay, so the next part then is this uh, other class which we're overriding uh, WX frame. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at uh, WX frame, see if we can find it in our documentation. Again, just finding the type here. And what does this give us here? This says WX frame is a window whose size and position can be changed by the user. So this is essentially our window that gives us the graphical user interface. So again, this is going to be in our application, the thing that has a title bar, usually a menu, and then some status bar at the bottom of it. Again, if I just go ahead and run our uh, program here uh, so that we can see it, uh, that's here. This is our WX frame here. Now, the important thing that's usually going on with these windows is that, well, since we're in a graphical user interface, we're reacting to different events that happen. That could be like when we click on hello here or when we click help and about here. So eventually what we're going to want to do is build some sort of event table or things that take place when we click within this frame and again, handle them within this uh, frame application here. Okay, so that's the idea. And we're going to be able to handle three different things on hello, on exit, and on about here, which are, well, really the three things that we can do here. We get some of the default functionality, like being able to resize the window and move some of these things by inheriting from WX frame. And again, the general style in the WX widgets is to inherit from this class. So you get the functionality and then extend it as needed. So these classes are extensible. That's why we're inheriting from everything here. All right, so let's go ahead and move on in the rest of our code here and look at this next portion here, which I'm gonna separate out just a little bit here. And you're gonna notice that we have this enum here. Uh, and this might seem a little bit strange here because what is this? But this is essentially giving us some unique identifier for some action or some event uh, that's gonna happen within our actual program. So we have one for hello here. Now, if you read through the actual uh, hello world tutorial, it's gonna address this a little bit, like why don't we have about or exits? Well, about and exit are actually predefined and have unique IDs uh, associated with them. So we just need to uh, create a uh, enum for hello here, some unique ID, and we just set it to one. And the typical convention is in your WX programs is that you just toss in everything into this enum. That way, since enums uh, enumerate or increment each item by one, you'll have unique IDs and don't really have to think about it. So that's the basic idea. When you want to have multiple actions, things to click on, events that happen, just add them to this enum here and have a unique ID for each of these. Okay. Now, the next thing here that is uh, buried in here a little bit um, is this line here called WX implement app. And it says my app here, which is the class that we have here. Now, this is a little bit weird here. In fact, if I scroll through this program, you're going to notice what's unclear is there's no main function. I only have one file. And that might be a little bit strange for us as programmers because we're used to having a main function where we know the program starts. Well, Instead, what we have with most, again, all of our WX uh, widgets applications is this WX implement app here. And I was actually wondering a little bit about this. So I'm just out of curiosity, going to open up another tab here. And since we have this source, and that's one of the advantages of the 
open source libraries we have, just sort of grab for this uh, wx implement app command here. And let's see what we find here. Now again, this could be another great tool for trying to understand things. We probably don't want to look in samples here because that's just going to have another set of base code here. But if I sort of scroll through this and look a little bit, I'll start finding this macro pop up here. And that's what it is. It's a macro. Uh, and I'll find it in include wx app.h. And let's go ahead and just look in include um, wx wx dot uh, h here. And again, I can go ahead and um, if I type it out right here, just search for, again, this string here, wx implement app, wx implement app, and just try to see where it pops up here. Again, I'll try to type it out carefully um, to see if we can actually find it here. wx, oh, let me try implement, um, or actually, let me go back in my search and I can actually just find what line it shows up on. It's my search for whatever reason is not working here. Line 916. Oh, that's because it's in uh, app.h, not wxh. So let's try that again, uh, which makes sense because um, that's what you're using here. So you get to see how I sort of search around here. And we can find some of the instances here, again, saying that it's a macro. Probably hard to um, read this here, but that's just wx implement app here our macro, and let's see if we can find any other insights here. And here looks like the actual uh, macro or one that's similar here, no main. Uh, so this one looks like it actually doesn't generate the main function. But this is where our main function actually comes from. Let's see if I keep searching if I can find this. Uh, it says same as implement app normally, and so on, and so on. Uh, and eventually we find one here use this macro exactly once. The argument is the name of the WX uh, derived class, which is the class of your application. Okay, so then we can actually see uh, what else is being defined. And, you know, these macros are going to expand uh, larger. Let me get rid of the highlights just so you can see uh, WX implement app here. Um, so this is going to give you an idea of how you can sort of dive into the internals, maybe beyond what tutorials describe and actually see in the source code what's going on. For now, you know, this is day maybe one for you in WX widgets and you don't care. That's fine. I just want to show you that these things exist and there's no magic here. Okay, so with that said, know that this is sort of a, uh, a macro that's wrapping this class here and it's going to have our main function in here. So there is a main function. There is some loop that's going to be running forever and it'll be set up uh, properly because it's built off of this WX app here. Okay, so the rest of our code here. Well, remember our app here has this on init function that we've overridden. So we have implemented this function here and we create our frame. Again, this is our actual window that's showing up, WX frame. Uh, we just call it my frame, which is right here, which is the WX frame. And then we show it and uh, return true, assuming that this again executes. Uh, now, by default, if you read through the documentation, I believe um, as of this release, um, or as always has been, um, if we don't call show, the window won't show up. So we actually have to do this, um, just, just so we're aware of that here. Okay, now on to the actual implementation of our frame here. You can see that we're using C++11 style uh, initialization here to set up some of the properties here. Um, and things like window title and so on. Um, let me actually bring that documentation up here. I'll close these windows here. Uh, we don't need them anymore. And we can go ahead and just shrink this down. And let's open up WX frame. And let's go ahead and see uh, if we can get any insight into the constructor that's listed here. So I'm going to go ahead and scroll down here. Here's the default constructor. And we've got a few other, well, which of these takes in three parameters. Here it is, our parent window, the ID, and WX um, ID any. Well, I'm just going to do a quick Google search for you. Um, it's just some special identifier uh, that you use when creating your windows here. So here it is um, that you can um, have available to you. So again, this is just some sort of unused identifier again remember when you're talking about hello the id underscore hello where we needed some unique identifier here this is sort of a similar idea here where you just don't have to worry about it so you could get away with that here 
Okay, so our other arguments here, again, the uh, title, we could set other things like the default position, size, and so on. Uh, does it have a frame and all these other parameters in our uh, constructor here? Okay, um, so that, that's right here, calling our frame constructor. So the next pieces of this are, again, creating our menu, appending to it some um, menu items here, separators, just sort of the UI things. Now, as you have a more advanced user interface, and we can get into this in future lessons, you don't always have to create things manually by creating the actual object and allocating it and so on. Um, you can load in a resource file that sort of defines what the user interface looks like. But this is a nice example of if you're sort of dynamically creating the user interface. Um, and again, you're just doing this in the constructor once, which is fine here. Okay, and then we have to call this bind uh, function here. So I'm going to separate this out because this is another sort of new idea here, um, just so it stands out. And what this is basically doing is saying, well, what's the type of the event here, which, well, these are menu events here, like when I click on the hello, about, um, and the exit on um, things, and then the actual address of the function. So this is the callback uh, function here, in a sense, uh, the actual object and then the unique identifier here. So just to explain this a little bit, the, the this is here because, well, where do we have or who's the sort of um, owning object of this function call for my frame on hello? Well, that's actually us. Uh, we have these uh, functions here on exit, on about, etc. These are the actual, again, address of this uh, particular class here that we want to call it on. We could call it on some other WX frame that maybe has its own on exit function or something, but uh, that is the idea here. So we have the actual address of that object. Okay, and then we actually just define what those member functions are doing. Maybe we're closing the window here, uh, maybe popping up a dialogue as we do in each of these two instances. And that's really all there is to it. It seems like a lot. Some of this stuff seems scary, but it's pretty logically uh, organized, which is pretty nice for WX widgets. Now you might notice there are some weird things in the WX guide um, goes into this just a little bit more. Let me see if I can actually back us out and show you where to get uh, the sort of next steps of information. But I would start looking at the programming guide and start reading, well, the click examples, hello world, and then to get an overview of WX. Because you'll notice, you know, we're not calling a destructor or deallocating our memory or anything like that, because the preference is, you know, in some case to uh, let the WX uh, widget sort of handle that when it's closing down. So one other thing that it will draw your attention to is in the events and events handling. Uh, it talks about different things that you're going to see in the, the samples. We've seen this bind, which um, is a way for us to uh, handle events, but there is also something where you can sort of centralize all of your events um, in one place, and that is with this uh, event table here, which does this statically and at um, compile time. I tend to like to do things dynamically, um, as is done in this example, by just calling this uh, bind function, which is nice, as opposed to the table. But to each your own, it's going to depend on the application you're handling or, or developing. Again, if you're going to have very dynamic things uh, that can be reconfigured from a user, you're sort of forced to use this method. Um, whereas if you have maybe a very simple interface, but with a lot of options, you want to just centralize how things happen, or if at load time, a configuration files just read in that sort of binds things, uh, that might be one way to handle this. So I think that would be one of the articles to read since, well, graphical user interface programming is about event handling. So lots more resources here. We will get into some of them as I show more examples in the future, but hopefully now you understand beyond what's provided and have seen how to dive in a little bit more the Hello World program. So folks, as always, I hope it was useful to see this uh, little example here where we have our little Hello World program and where we can do some interesting things with the <laughs> menus and so on. Um, and if you enjoyed this and found it helpful, go ahead and consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you in some more lessons in the future. Thank you for your time.